Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about a second brain and how it can help you as a software developer. We deal with a lot of information day to day as well as having to constantly learn and document things on the go. This can all get quite overwhelming. So having a long term strategy to help us remember everything we've learned and more importantly, provide searchable and actionable information down the road is incredibly important. A second brain when it comes down to it is a structured way of capturing information, organizing it, distilling it down and expressing that knowledge into something useful. Whether that's a new side project, documenting your learnings at work or making future repetitions of a specific task easier next time round. It's a way of ensuring that the ludicrous amounts of information we have to deal with day to day stops bouncing around our heads and is recorded somewhere we, where we can make use of it long term. As software developers, we're constantly learning and evolving our skills. A big part of what makes us successful is our ability to problem solve and utilize existing resources to piece together a solution. One of the key problems we face is the sheer wealth of information thrown our way, otherwise known as information overwhelm. There's a lot of stuff that we have to think about to do our job and a lot of dots to connect as well. Our job typically follows the following steps. Once we have a problem defined, we have input via information gathering, processing, which is digesting the information and figuring out solutions to our problem, and then the output, the solution itself. The more efficient we are at navigating that information, knowing the capabilities of the tools we work with and knowing the right places to search to get answers. The faster we work and the less frustrated we get, the less frustrated our managers get. Our workflow is typically, can we do that? Yes, no, or maybe. The second question is, how can you do that? Which then involves a cyclical approach of input, processing, and output. I'd argue that the information gathering stage comes down to your Google Foo skills, your own personal experience, and whether or not you have a colleague to guide you. The processing and output stage is where the second brain really comes into the picture. A second brain helps us by aiding the categorization, search, and grouping of our experience. This may sound a little abstract, so I'll give you some concrete examples. Every time I've set up a new environment, I have to Google how to set up my path variables for my command line. Every time I set up a new project, there's typically a predefined list of tools and NPM packages I want to install. Next.js, Tailwind, setting up my linter, and so on. These are all pretty repeatable tasks that don't change much between each execution, but it's something I constantly forget to do. Storing that information in a second brain means that for anything repeatable that I don't do often, it's a really good place to store. This also extends to anything you do, whether it's personal or work related. If you know you'll do it again at some stage and doing it this time took a while to figure out, jot it down. How many times have you had to write the same regex query to filter by email? And how many times did you think, oh God, how do I do this again? Using a second brain to store valuable code snippets in whatever language you're using is incredibly helpful. If you're moving between jobs or projects or whatever that might be, those things can stick with you throughout your career. We have to learn a lot, frequently. It's one of the best parts of the job and also one of the worst. Having a system in place to store the most useful resources you found when learning a technology is a really useful thing to do. It acts as a data point for when you want to refresh on certain concepts, a storage bucket for any future tutorials or things you want to do, any particular projects or ideas that might have sprung up in thinking about the language. One tangible benefit for me is realistically finding a good teacher. When I find someone who gels with my way of thinking, I can look back over all the tutorials I've done and see if they've done a course on the next thing I would need to learn. This happened with Where's Boss. I did his JavaScript for Everybody course and then his React course and then his ZSH course. These are some of the specific benefits I've found for developers, but there are many more. Any project or task that benefits from documenting and organizing your thoughts will be made easier by having a second brain. Some of the most popular tools are Obsidian, Notion, Apple Notes, and Roam Research. There are many others to choose from, and I've linked a few in the description down below. It's called a personal knowledge management system for a reason. So your tool and how you structure your second brain is entirely down to you. That being said, I'd really recommend going with something tried and true and not go and build something your own like Sean here. Props to him though. You're trying to simplify your life and not have another dangling domain over your head. The tools I'd personally recommend checking out would be Obsidian, Notion, and Apple Notes. Obsidian is something Cassidy from our podcast has talked about extensively, so I'll let her do the elevator pitch.
I think that's why I like Obsidian so much, because it has that flexibility. Since it's just a pile of markdown files, like, I can add whatever tags I want to it, whatever backlinks I want to it. I could add nothing. I, I can add aliases or IDs or nothing. It, it's that flexible where, because it's just files on my computer, I don't have to worry about, like, if I switch to another note-taking system, how am I going to export all of it? It's already on my machine. Hmm, that's a good point. I just googled Obsidian just to have a quick look while you're doing it. Obsidian makes me more productive on every device. My entire second brain now gets backed up easily and is customized mm. to my liking. Cassidy Williams. Yes, <laughs> I gave them a quote. I like them, okay? Cassidy, if you're being paid to promote them, you have to just. I'm them. not. I just <laughs> like them that much. Personally, I'm most familiar with Apple Notes. I love how quickly it is to open and jot something down, which, as it turns out, is a double-edged sword and brings up a very clear distinction in what a second brain is and is not. In order for a second brain to work, it requires structure and intentional ingestion of knowledge. It is very different from working memory management, which is essentially how I treat Apple Notes. When setting up your second brain, I would thoroughly recommend identifying a tool or a place within your second brain to manage your working memory. This is a place for things like quick rapid thoughts, to-do lists, reminders, and so on. Things that you don't need to be categorized or tagged. You can always move things from your working memory pages to their proper place within your second brain later on. Some people make this a habit to clear out at the end of the day at eight o'clock. When analyzing what tool works for you, I'd encourage downloading all of them and having a play around. You're not locked in at the first tool you choose. You can look at all the lists and the pro cons that you want, but in reality, I think you'd be better served spending a few hours or even a week with each tool to see for yourself. There are a few frameworks you can look into when structuring your second brain. Para and Zet Carlston. P-A-R-A, or Para, breaks down your second brain into projects, area of responsibilities, resources, and archives. Zet Carlston is a method for using personal note-taking, breaking down the information capture into three types of notes. Literature, reference, and permanent notes. This is a wildly simplified explanation. In reality, both of these methods are so much more in-depth. So experiment with both, see what works for you, and go from there. Don't be afraid to iterate, and some people have even managed to combine the two for something that works specifically for them. Everything I've listed above has been a great example of a personal knowledge man management system. As developers, we're often working within teams across many different languages, infrastructures, programming ideologies, and so on. The question then becomes, how do you scale a personal second brain to something that's applicable at an organizational level. Something that has easily accessible results through search, tag knowledge articles, and the ability to keep information up to date and fresh. And that's where we think Stack Overflow for Teams really shines. When researching second brain for software developers, in almost every article I came across, the Stack Overflow public site was mentioned, which is great, it's fantastic, because that's exactly the problem we're trying to solve making information more readily accessible for software developers and reducing the time from how do I do this to complete a Jira ticket. Stack Overflow has a product called Stack Overflow for Teams, which is essentially a private instance of the public Stack Overflow website and the closest thing you're going to get to a scaled second brain for your company. The reason it works so well is that it takes a lot of the concepts of a second brain, searchable, structured, tagged information, and has a bunch of tooling built on top of that to make the information much more accessible to you and your teammates. There's a number of ways to structure your data, for example, with collections, which allows you to group questions and articles that relate to a specific topic. SO for Teams is much more than a personal knowledge management system because it's more of a knowledge management system. Having a standard here means your information is kept consistent over the long term, which is vital for keeping your data accessible and useful and up to date. So while it might not work for you personally as a second brain, it works wonderfully well as a second brain for your organization. If you're wanting to find out a bit more about SO for Teams, there's a link in the description below. We also have a freemium plan that you can check out if you're curious. The key takeaways I want you to get from this video are as follows. A second brain will help keep you organized long term. Everything will be structured, searchable, and not lost. That's very valuable as you move throughout your career. Secondly, a second brain as a personal knowledge management system is just that, it's personal. Everything I've explained here today is a foundation for you to do your own research and figure out what works best for you. 
whether that's a chaotic series of post-it notes on your pegboard or a meticulously tagged and automated digital file system. It's down to you and how your brain works. When it comes to curating knowledge at scale, that's a very different problem. Teams is one of the tools that you can use for that as it takes a structured approach to being your second brain. So that's everything. I really hope you got some value out of this. Go check out some of the resources and tools I've linked in the description below and best of luck acquiring your second brain.